All right, Holman, follow me out of the pod shed. Let's go into the uh, the Holman front yard. Oh, man, it's so dark out here. You need, like, a light on the side of your house. Oh, there is a light right there. And another light. They're motion uh, activated. I like that. All right, I got Big Red, the bank's dually out here. Put the tailgate down. I'm going to climb in. Looks like pieces to a headache rack. Uh, those have uh, packing slips on them from uh, Temecula, California. Why? Because they got powder coated? No. These are my ballers, baby. Oh, ballers. <laughs> in bubble wrap. I have no idea why they shipped them in bubble wrap. And why did they, how did they come? Where did you get them from? Just like this. I got these. I'd rather not say. So did, did, they, get, did they get shipped to you? Or <laughs> they did got you pick shipped. Them up? No, they got shipped FedEx. From Canada? No, these didn't come from Canada. I found somewhere else to get them. Oh, I didn't want to pay those uh, ungodly Canadian tariffs. Well, or no, American tariffs. Uh-huh. So I just wanted to let you know that these are real and they're big. And yep. hopefully this is the answer to keeping the, Honestly, the truck in the like front yard. Torsos are wrapped up in bubble wrap. Is... I know. Well, I was going to rip it open for you, but. No, don't don't scratch the uh, beautiful. I'm going to come by and bump into them with my car or something I mean, after uh, you have them installed. I would appreciate you not doing that. So they're here. Let's go in and do a podcast. I thought you'd never ask. Holman, what's uh, up on this episode of the Truck Show Podcast? Apparently, uh, lightning receives bollards. <laughs> we just we just did that. Oh, okay, we're not. We don't have to. We're, we're moving on. Okay. The next uh, how to protect lightning's TRX is going to be probably when you come to. Can we just make that a house? spinoff miniseries? That way, our listeners don't have to actually listen to any more lightning TRX it, it's stories. Gonna, it's going to be a while because we're going to have our friend Rich over to the house to uh, uh-huh. drill some giant holes in my driveway. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, ballers aside, this is going to be a good show. We've got our friend Emmy Hall who uh, decided to uh, grace us with her presence tonight in the uh, pod shed, at least virtually. So uh, we'll give her a call here in a little bit. And yeah, buddy. She's been driving all sorts of trucks and exotics and weird things lately and we'll uh, we'll drill down on uh, some of her favorite recent vehicle reviews plus there's news on buddy and uh i think she's got merch now which we, we don't have what she has merch she has merch she has merch or buddy has merch she has merch so i'm sure she'll uh, uh, i'm sure she'll talk to you about i can't that. believe she beat us to the shirt game all right uh but before we get into our friend emmy we have to thank our presenting sponsor nissan who's been with us for uh Basically, the entire run of the Truck Show podcast, so we can't thank them enough. And, uh, oh, did I tell you I had my second delivery in my driveway? Second delivery of what? The Aria. So, Nissan, when you buy an Aria, they, two weeks later or whenever your schedule allows, they send a specialist to your house to walk you through everything that you still have questions about. And they spend an hour with you, what? walk you through all your settings. Like and a concierge service? Yeah. And so... Uh, this lady shows up at my house, we set an appointment through the dealership or the app. Was she wearing white gloves? Nope, but she uh, came up in a full tilt Aria, and uh, we sat in the driveway, and she said, you know, I kind of told her who I was and that I wanted the experience, even though I was pretty familiar with the car. This is, wait, th- you're a journalist, or, or this is for anyone? No, no, for anyone, for any customer. What? And so uh, one of the uh, executives over at Nissan called me up because, hey, I know you're a journalist. I know it's this isn't normal, but you bought this thing. I want you to experience what we call second delivery. We're going to send somebody to your house and explain everything. We're thinking about expanding it to some other products. I'm interested in your feedback. So the specialist comes to the house, and we sat in my car, and we went through all the settings. And she goes, well, you're more savvy than you know a normal customer, so is there anything that you have questions about? And there, there are a few things. I'm like, why does it do this? Or what about this? So she gave me some tips. She set a couple of settings a little differently than I had them. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. She showed me some Did stuff Did you there. slap her hand out of the way and no. go, no, 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 this is my car? No, it's great. And so uh, just a shout out to Nissan. I, I think it's a, just a really great service and uh, love that thing. I so. haven't even heard of German car companies doing that, where you spend $200,000. They don't come to your uh, house. Yeah. So the, you just it's all part of the, uh, the process. Wow. I thought that was pretty neat. Huh. Well, you know we love Nissan because of their trucks, and obviously they make a great midsize truck in the Nissan Frontier. And you can find out more about it by going to NissanUSA.com where you can build and price, pick out any of the options you want, and then find a dealership. And they'll even do the Nissan at home where they'll come to your house 
uh, in select areas and give you the test drive right out of your driveway. You don't even have to go to the dealership. So, you, so they're giving you the test drive. You yeah. go to the dealership, you buy it, you mm-hmm. get some free coffee and stuff. Then you come home and the next day they teach you how to use it. Well, I th- And I think that they even include um, a lot of the paperwork if you do the Nissan at home program. So you're not sitting there on, you know, the, the mercy of the sales manager on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon or something like that. So, so anyway, a really great buying experience through Nissan. So again, NissanUSA.com to build on price. Or of course, if you're old school, you can head on down to your local Nissan dealership where they'll be happy to walk you through your new car right there on the showroom floor. Holman, I want you to take a look at the photograph on my phone and describe that. What do you think that that very oily, sooty object is? Uh, it looks like a grid heater. That is a grid heater. Uh, what year RAM is that out of? If you had to guess, based on the amount of soot blocking the heater, so very little air is actually getting into the intake manifold. I'm trying to look at the uh, different stampings on here. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. It's the same part number it's, for it's really, 07 and a half to 24. So that's going to really be tough. disgusting looking, by the way. It looks yeah. like it's, it's sludgy, and I would say 50% of the grid is blocked around the edges. Mm-hmm. The reason you're asking me that is it must be pretty new. I'm going to say 2021. Damn, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, 2021. Yeah, that's nuts. So will you post that picture on the Truck Show Podcast Instagram so people can see what we're talking about? Yeah, I've shot it vertically. Yes, I can do that. Because I think that people aren't going to believe it until they see. And when they see how many miles and how new that is, that that's the inside of their truck, they're going to be like, whoa. So when you buy the Banks Monster Ram, the high flow billet intake plate comes with the monster ram. It replaces all this. So you eliminate grid heater bolt failure from happening. You eliminate all the places where this really oily soot will stick to and cause restrictions in airflow. Check out the bank's monster ram. It's 50 state compliant for 2013 all the way to 2024 ram 6.7 liter Cummins diesels. Head over to bankspower.com to get yours. Okay, so if I've got that problem on my ram, can you reduce the soot with better diesel oil? Yes. They're at, yes. As a matter of fact, uh, according to Mike Keegan, our engine builder at work, he has seen reduced sooting by using Amsoil Max Duty Full Synthetic Diesel Oil. So the Amsoil Signature Series Max Duty Diesel Oil is 100% synthetic. You can get it in all sorts of weights. Outstanding extreme pressure protection. It delivers six times more wear protection. Maintains proper viscosity. Minimizes oil consumption, maximizes fuel efficiency, and excels in extreme temperatures. You can also extend drain intervals with confidence. If you want to find out more about AMSOIL's complete line of diesel engine oils, you want to head over to AMSOIL.com and check out their signature series, 100% synthetic max duty diesel oil. And Lightning, before uh, we hit that jingle, did you know we have a a new uh, sponsor here on the Truck Show Podcast? No. No, I did not. Uh, You may remember our friends, EGR USA. We did uh, a little podcast from their booth at SEMA last year. Yes, you mean the same EGR that makes the roll track on the back of my TRX. Uh, Yes, and the same EGR that many of our listeners have said, I've got one of those now. (laughs) Yes. Uh, By the way, if you go to truckshowpodcast.com and you go to our featured products page, you can check out EGR USA. If you scroll down, you can enter the Truck Show Pod code in the affiliate rebate code online. If you got a EGR Roll Track tunnel cover, you get a discount. EGR Fender Flares, you get a discount. EGR VSL LED headlights, you also get a discount. All because of our friends at EGR. They want to uh, take care of the Truck Show Podcast listener. We love them over there. Great quality products. You want to head over to EGRUSA.com to see the full lineup. So if you bought any of those uh, EGR products, head over to uh, TruckShowPodcast.com to that featured products page and uh, fill out the form. Well, they'll do it retroactively? Yeah, they'll do it retroactively where you get a discount uh, by using uh, Truck Show Pod in the uh, affiliates rebate code. And then that, uh, and of course, that helps out the show. So awesome products, high quality, made here in the USA. Yeah, they're here in America, not far from our studio, but the stuff is made in Australia and the Aussies are insane when it comes to detail. Just, I mean, down to the wiring, the packaging, you could beat the snot out of this EGR roll track. It's designed to take an absolute beating. But it's also full of features like being able to, if you have the power one like you do, being able to work with your key fob yes. when you unlock your doors and it rolls up back automatically. The fact that when I use my key fob and lock yeah. my doors, the roll track the will not open. Also. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's like having so a trunk. Cool. Yeah. But you don't lose your pickup truck bed. No. And it's fully watertight. Yeah. When it was pouring rain, I never posted that video. What a moron. It just occurs to me. During that last rainstorm, yeah. I got in the bed and shot video of me all the way around, like scooching around. Not a single drop was in my bed. And dude, it was 
buckets coming down. So All right, well, it is uh, EGR Roll Tracks what we're talking yep, about. If you want uh, tunnel covers, fender flares, LED lights, window visors, hood guards, body side moldings, cap spoilers, sport bars, accessories, under seat storage, EGR USA has it all. Head over to EGRUSA.com and they'll be hanging out with us for the rest of the year right here on the Truck Show Podcast. The Truck Show. We're going to show you what we know. We're going to answer what the truck Cause truck rides with the truck show. We have the lifted, we have the lowered, and everything in between. We'll talk about trucks that run on diesel and the ones that run on gasoline. The truck show, the truck show, the truck show. Whoa, whoa. It's the truck show with your hosts, Lightning and Holman. All right, let's dial up some Emmy. Emmy time. I love Misha about Emmy. this. Yes, it's been a minute. I know you talk to her all the time, but me, not so much. All right, I will dial Ms. Hall. Hi, you guys. What's going on? What's happening, Emmy Hall? You act like you haven't talked to her in a while. Yeah, I, talk, I talk to her like several times a week. You do. I don't. You never talked to her? I would love to. No, I don't have her number. So, oh, I, oh well, you know, she, she figured no, out stop, a way to stop, uh, delete stop. it from my phone. So no, I wouldn't I, call her. I, she I just flexed. Lightning. No. I blocked lightning. I blocked lightning a long time ago. Pause. Pause. <laughs> she just flexed on us, and Jay talked right through it. What the hell's wrong with you? S- what do you mean? She w- flexed on us, Jay. What did, what did she say? It's not what she said. I heard it. Oh. <laughs> I heard your crap. He died. Oh, pepper. in the background. I see. Got it. Hey, well, by, by the way, uh, I know you know this, mm-hmm. but it's interesting that mm-hmm. Dr. Pepper is now number two and Diet Dr. Pepper wasn't anywhere on that list. Mm, no, it wasn't. No, but here's the thing. They didn't specify if it was diet or regular. They just said diet. Di- I think well, like the whole part right. Of Dr. Pepper. Just like my I can doesn't. My can doesn't both. specify diet Dr Pepper either. But I know that crap's not inside of it. Whatever diet Dr Pepper is way better than regular Dr Pepper. No. And my skinny ass waist and your big old fatty one proves it. <laughs> Ouch! I'm gonna see. That's a flex. I'm gonna refrain from saying anything uh-huh. because. She's a woman. <laughs> yeah, she is a woman. And I will get hate. You know, okay. That, bring that into our jingle. Okay. Well, you know what? Let me just type jingle. this into the magic box and right. out pops this. Emmy, hold on one second. She's got a can in her hand. Diet Dr. Better on demand. Flying high over the land. With cast by her side and the plan. In a fancy car she drives. Expensive seat heaters keeping her alive. A little too escapes her stride. <laughs> She's laughing so hard she could cry. Mm-hmm. Jet around the globe, farting in style. <laughs> She's got her cats and her soda. Makes her smile <laughs> from Paris to Tokyo. There we go, Emmy. Uh, what do you think of your new uh, intro? <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> the whole thing from the cats to the cars to the Diet Dr. Pepper, like, it's like whoever wrote that um, knew exactly who I am. Exactly. She had her, uh, what was it, uh, Stealing Hearts and uh, Cutting Fart shirt on Busted yesterday? Farts. Yeah, yeah, farts. Farts. All right, so here's the thing is I was telling Emmy okay. that she has to come back on. Because we haven't heard from her, A, in a while, and B, because all of our listeners are always asking about her and requesting her, yeah, buddy, uh, drop. And she said, no, you're lying. And I'm like, no, seriously. They write emails, and at the end, they'll say, Emmy, yeah, buddy. Do you not know that that's a thing? I I can't believe that that is true. Listen, I'm I'm a very popular person, and I have a stellar personality, and I'm cute as all get out. But, like, people leaving <laughs> emails too. about the drop, come on. It's got to be in the hundreds. It has to be. I don't know. It's a lot. And it, what's so funny, you guys, is that whole thing was never, like, that was just a thing that came out of my mouth, and then it got popular from you. And now, like, Buddy has a, a literally t-shirt a following. on Blip Shift. Yeah, I saw your And, Blip like, Shift a whole shirt. following. And it's, I cannot believe that I actually owe something to you guys. Yeah, me well, either. I mean, wait, wait, tell me about the shirt on Blip Shift. How did that happen? Well, if you and follow me on social, one. you would yeah, know. Well... <laughs> no comment. So, Lightning, you don't know about Blip Shift? I know about the website where you can buy cool shirts, like one-off shirts that yeah, are contributed yeah, yeah. by so, cool artists, but I did not know that you had one. 
It just came out today. I did not design it. Um, a guy named Guy Sims, he's Guy Ricketures on Instagram. Um, he designed it because I really like his work and I think it's really fun. And uh, yeah, I just emailed Blipshift. I I saw that um, Jeff Glucker had a, uh, he works for Kelly Blue Book and Autoblog and he's got this really cool Montero. And he had a Blipshift shirt with his Montero. And I was like, wait a minute, like, can I just, like, can anyone just do that? So I emailed them and they were like, yeah, just send in your design. And if we think it's cool, we'll run it. I was like, heck yeah. So I did and they liked it. And so now I have a t-shirt um, that is available through July 9th on Blipshift. Damn. And all of the proceeds go to um, Sons of Smoky slash Gambler 500. And that, and that helps clean up public lands. So there you have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to do it for like a good cause. I couldn't go to the Gambler 500 this year, which was just this past weekend. Um, I had to work, and I I chose Porsche over the Gambler 500, which is like I feel kind of bad, but Tate like not is really. Be very really angry like with Porsches. you. <laughs> no, Tate knew it's fine. All right, all right. Well, I'm trying to but find yeah, so it here on Blipshift.com. I'm I'm trying to find it here. Yeah. Why don't you go go, go to so go to shop. Instagram? Yeah. Okay. Go to shop. All right. Go to Designs shop. Stock. And then at the top of shop, there should be uh, partner stores. Or oh, if you e- stores. easily. Oh, there it is. Yeah, buddy. Uh, Emmy Hall. Right go, in the front top left hand corner. Go to at yeah, Emmy. So that's yeah, E-M-M-E on Instagram. And you can find it that way, too. Yeah, it's in my, the link is in my bio. Dude, this shirt is so like 1983. It's her, it's I love it. sticker. This is super cool. It's, the one, it's so great. I think it's the same one we have. Yeah, it's the same one we have in the, in the pod shed. Yeah. The no, it's not. It's no, an no, updated. No, it's, it's an updated version. So All it's right. the same idea, but like Buddy got a few updates, like different wheels, different tires, um, uh, some different like window nets, and like he's more racy now for sure. I mean, your so artist took some liberties. And, well, what do you mean? He's so perfect. <laughs> he has the rigid lights on there, and he's got the number. He's got a car tech sticker. I mean, that's so cool. That's super cool. Emmy Hall loves Buddy the Off-Road Miata more than life itself and will happily talk your ear off about him. However, when she's not jumping, sliding, or hooning the wheels off this little NB, she's out riding for all things automotive for sites like Car and Driver, The Autopian, and Inside EVs. Wait, you didn't use OVR on the gram. What? <laughs> no. She's ridden for OVR. Damn. Damn. Burn. Burn. Super oh, burn. that's right. I have. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Wow, you know, she's either counting on her fingers the uh, four outlets and she forgets, you know, one of them from her friend Sean. The four outlets? You go (laughs) straight to hell and don't talk to I mean, aren't you guys bigger than the Autopian now? Hey, so you've uh, been all over the place. I I saw you uh, in France on D-Day with uh, you and Lynn. Yes. And then I saw you. Were you riding around in the Maserati boats the other day? I saw you the Porsche stuff. Like you got a lot of stuff going on that's not here. What what the hell? What do you what did you say? Maserati boats? I was not on the Maserati boats. I wish I had been on the Maserati boats, but I I was not, which was kind of a bummer. But you know, like we can't all be Maserati boat people. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get on that trip. No, I was on the uh, driving the new Cayenne GTS, which was super fun. What am I doing next? New Explorer, Ford Explorer. Where's the expedition? No, it's the Explorer. And Audi SQ7s and some Mercedes AMG stuff. And I have a ZR2 Colorado Bison AEV in my driveway right now. Damn. I mean, they love well, this truck so much, you guys. She just drove the uh, new in, uh, Infiniti QX80 uh, as well. That she was it Mr. Fudgy. Is that what you were calling it? Mr. Fudgy? Why? Oh, uh, yeah. Fudgy the whale. <laughs> Fudgy the whale. Was it brown? <laughs> why? why? It wasn't brown, but. <laughs> they're so big <laughs> rewind so because big. I need to hear that order because all those vehicles I'm personally interested screw you listeners this is about lightning wait, tell me wait, first wait, wait, about wait. the Cayenne oh. GTS shouldn't you normally say screw you listeners because isn't it normally about lightning this yes, whole show it Everybody. always is so yes. right now you felt like to put a, you need to put a disclaimer I'm just, I'm just putting it out there is that for Emmy tune out. For our listener. tune out because the next few minutes are about me all right. whatever Let's go. tell me about the <laughs> Cayenne GTS okay so Cayenne GTS it's got it's a V8, right? So it's almost 500 horsepower. You've got to still option like Porsche loves their options, right? So like all of like the really good stuff, like oh, the air suspension, dynamic suspension, like that's extra, and Everything's the chassis extra. control is extra. The, they'll be like, "Do you it's want all, chrome on your door handle? 500 bucks. Do you it's want all extra? Yeah. Do you want lit yeah. up door sills? A thousand dollars. You want uh, metallic paint? Fifty thousand dollars. You want this wheel? It's like well, the base the car thing, must come with nothing. But, so, so, but, so I agree. But, 
But, but Holman, what's really cool about that is that you could get the base model and you could spend less money on the base model, get a less powerful engine if that was your thing, and still get all of those handling characters. How is it not my so thing? That like, no, but, th- no, Holman, but that cool. is what I was getting at. I don't want that, less like, engine. Like my wife's Macan. She's got all the cool stuff that makes it look like a GTS. Mm. No, not all, but a lot of it. Don't give me that smirk. Are you, are you She's, really going to try and sell Hold on a Macan. second. Wait a minute. She's got a lot of the uh-huh. upgrades that make it look like the more expensive and feel like from the, more the outside. From the, yeah, the inside is a little is a little econo. It's way. I was listen, but the nice outside. Fun. It looks as in passing by the average Porsche. Yeah, but you, would you, like, you added oh, you stuff. All, you no, added. Yes, you did. You lowered it. Oh, that was it. That's oh the only thing I've done. You haven't done wheels on that thing? Nope. Bone stock. It got the upgraded wheels, though. Yes. Okay. And so exhaust. That wasn't, yeah, the, no, no. Got, what Emmy brought up, she said, you can buy all these things and add them at the dealership, which I think is kind of cool. Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that Porsche, at their premium, makes one of the finest automobiles in the entire world. But the fact that they keep trying to lower the price of admission into the brand... They have bastardized the lower ones. Like your your wife's Macan, it's a Volkswagen. It's a really nice Volkswagen. It, I know Incredible that. Volkswagen. Yes. Not a great Porsche. Yeah. No, there's when you I had it up on the lift yes. when I was putting the springs in, yeah. it's got Audi and Volkswagen logos all over the, the her last arms car, and all that stuff. Oh yeah. The yeah. Atlas yeah. Sport or whatever that she yeah, had. For yeah. sure. I thought it was way nicer for the price point than what the Porsche is. Way I, nicer. I agree. This she just wanted to I, I know, I get it. Some, I'm not I'm not judging her. I'm just yeah, talking I mean, about the car. The base Cayenne is what, eighty five thousand dollars? And and that's with the V6 with like 300 and something horsepower. The GTS starts at 125 with 500 horsepower and zero to 60 and 4.4. Which honestly, like after you've after you've started doing some electric vehicles, you're like 4.4 is so slow. And it's like, God, well, what do we come to? Well, I okay. So not to totally turn it around into a Nissan commercial, but I bought my Aria, right? So I've been driving that yeah. my daily. It's the base model, but the nice thing about the Aria is they all look the same, except for the top, mm-hmm. top, top. Uh, was it Platinum Plus? Everything went all the out. The trim's the same. The wheels are the same. It's all gloss black. There's no black plastic on the outside. That's unpainted. Everything's the same. The where they get you is to go up in trim is nicer seat materials. Although they're the identical seats, a power memory on are the they, passenger are they, side. The insets. What what's changed down? Yeah, because it's just fake leather versus real leather. Panoramic sunroof. Yeah. A power lift gate. Or dual motor and bigger batteries. That's that's the only thing. So the base yeah. model that I got, freaking awesome. I put two thousand miles on that thing already. I drive it every day, and it's honestly one of the finest cars I've ever I've ever owned. I'm like I'm blown away at how good that car is for its price point. And and that's one of the things. And it where, probably is really quick off the line and super fun, huh? For only having two hundred and twenty one pound feet of torque, yeah. It's, I mean, it still does zero to sixty in seven seconds, so it's not. Super slow, but it's not you know crazy fast. The if you get the dual motor, it does yeah. zero to sixty in four and a half seconds. He didn't buy this for performance. No, he I bought it to I, take the kids. To school. I bought it to yeah. run around town, but I've right. t- driven it to Palm Springs, yeah. and I've got a trip to San Diego coming up that I'm going to take it down there uh, for. And it's like the more time I spend with that, that to me, the reason I bring it up is because that's a base model done right. That base model, yeah. Everybody who gets in, they're like, oh my god, you have two 12 inch screens, and you have all this stuff, and you have this ambient lighting, and you have. They, and, they, and the sound system didn't suck. No, the sound system's great. So they don't kill the brand equity by having the entry-level model, where I feel like some of the European brands really go on a cheap, cheap, cheap cost-cutting to meet that price point. And I feel like that's the difference between a Japanese car company and a German car company and a luxury brand versus a mainstream brand. Although my kid's Mazda 3, the one that you just got, yes, because he graduated from college. Yes, so mm-hmm. we, we leased him a car, and he's oh. got... You're going to say, about, so we, oh, I know what you're going to bring up. You do? I wonder if Emmy knows that about the base model. Well, 3. I don't know. The Let base me model hear 3. it. Yeah. So the base model three, Emmy, doesn't have the, that they have like a, a turbo version that you get a better sound system and you, you know, just all the packages like, yeah. That. So we got, we got the base, but we got the really cool color called ceramic, which is kind of an off white, uh-huh. kind of a really super light gray, super duper light gray, really neat. With some pearlescent in it. Anyway, okay. so the stereo, we're playing with the stereo, and we thought, this is weird. I can't hear any back speakers. So I faded all the way to the back. <gasps> Nothing. And I go, well, that's no back speakers. So I, that, that's odd. And I look back in the doors, and there's grills for speakers. And I take a flashlight, shine <gasps> it in there. Ain't no speaker in there. So I call up a buddy. In a Mazda 3? So yes. I call up a buddy who designs the man-machine interfaces for Mazda, and he goes, Oh yeah, starting in 23, we no longer put the speakers in the base model. And it's a different amplifier under the passenger seat 
that doesn't have a rear channel. I'm like, what you what? Why? No way. What are you saying? Lightning, the king of audio, bought a car with no rear uh, speakers in it. (laughs) So so I obsessed over it for the first two weeks. But I said, Gavin, who's my kid, I said, are you okay with it? He goes, Dad, it sounds fine to me. It sounds fine. And I go, you know, the kids now are like, they listen to crappy headsets and like AirPods and stuff like that. He didn't bother him. But like to me, I was going just berserk so i called and I said oh well, can i get the different amplifier can i swap it in for the more expensive and i can r- wire the speakers and all thing my dad and my kid's like dad don't just like, slow your roll it's all good emmy oh, l- let's go man. on to the other car so to wrap up the porsche how did you get asked to do it what's that part of where are we going to read about it and then what's the next car so they invited me well actually they invited a, a website called slash gear and slash gear um asked me to do it so uh, it is live with Slash Gear right now, and then it will be live on Car Gurus, which is definitely a more like consumer focused site. Love Car um, Gurus. Probably, probably tomorrow or Thursday. Did you say I love Car so, Gurus? I do. You mean you went on it to research your Mazda three, and they never told you didn't have rear speakers? I didn't go on there to research it. No, I bought <laughs> no my Mercedes speakers, off Car Gurus, and I was uh, oh, really? originally looking at used TRXs way back on Car Gurus. So there's no endorsement for them, but I just like the the UI. It's like super easy. It to, is super to easy. Use. Yeah. So big fan. Yeah, it is. What's next in the line of uh, Emmy reviews? In terms of reviews, um, I've got actually the new Miata coming, the new 2024. So I'm excited about that, and then uh, Ford Explorer. And then, yeah, and I'm looking forward to the Audi because we're doing the, the S, Q, and then and the regular Q, so that'll be fun because um, I haven't been in an S, Q in a really, really, really long time. And then an AMG CLE as well. So now let's talk about the truck that's sitting in your driveway. It's so good. I love this truck so much. If I had if I had 60 grand, I would go buy it right now. Yeah, 60 grand is a lot of money. Right now. So give us the recap of what it is. Okay, so I've got um, the new... Colorado ZR2 Bison with the AEV package. So this is the top of the top of the top of the top. Holman and I were on the original launch of this that was out here in Johnson Valley, where we did some like pretty technical rock falling. Yes, and we did. because this thing has a front locker, it like it doesn't care. It doesn't, it'll it'll just climb up anything. And it's great in the whoops, you know, like 50 miles an hour through the whoops without a deal because it's got those jounce bumpers that really help um, soak up the compression once the shocks get really high compressed. Those jounce bumpers just take up the last little bit of it. And the Multimatic shocks are the, I mean, they're They're, great. They're awesome. I love them so much. They're probably the best OE shocks out there that come on a factory package of almost anything in the off-road. Yeah. Hold on a second. Do you like them better than the the Bill Stein? It's a different. It's a different. Blackhawks don't come on an OE shock. Oh, on the TRX? Yeah. Oh, that's a, okay. A Blackhawk E square, yes. which is different than the old Blackhawk. Um, there's in the midsize price class, there's nothing better, period, than the Multimatics. In the full size yeah. trucks, so you look at a silver, uh, Chevy Silverado ZR2. But they have the Multimatics now. Hold on. In the half ton space, which is where the TRX plays, Multimatic is on the ZR2. But no, they're not as good as the the Bilstein TRX uh, shocks. They don't have electronic control, and they don't have as much travel. And so that the ZR2 1500 Silverado is not as well buttoned up as a truck for go fast as the TRX and also yeah. the Raptor is. But it's really good yeah. against like a TRD Pro Tundra. Gotcha. I would take a, a ZR2 full size over a TRD Tundra any day. Of the week. I, I would too. But I would take the TRX or the RHO over either of those any day. Do you guys think that there's a future electronic version of the Multimatic shock setup? Uh, there could be. Yeah, but I feel like the shims and the valve, like the the valves and the uh, that they have, and and all of the shimming and the spool valves and blah blah blah, like that's basically doing what the electronic shocks, like what the Fox live valve shocks do. It's just doing it more mechanically. Now, whether or not they could add some electric stuff to that and make it respond faster i don't know but i have never felt like those shocks have been slow to react to changing terrain yeah the way i've never felt that the way the spool valves work is they're they're very very fast so i'll go back out with with the caveat mid-size truck category nothing's better than multi-matic half ton truck the bilstein blackhawks are the best and then you go back up to heavy duty shocks Mm -hmm. again the multi-matics that are on the silverado hds and the uh, sierra hds there's nothing in the full size truck that's as good as those. It's interesting. They I feel like yeah. Ram could have parlayed the Blackhawk E squared into a full size. Haven't, 
but they they could. You mean into uh, like a ram? I'm sorry, I'm sorry yeah, into a yeah one, heavy duty, heavy duty three quarter. Well, the ton. problem is those shocks are already incredibly expensive. I mean, they, they've mm-hmm. probably they're probably triple the cost of a normal shock. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of chassis and development tuning needs to go into it because it's reading from CAN bus and all the sensors and things like that. Where the Multimatics, to Emmy's point, are just a hydro just mechanical, mechanical shock. Yeah, and and they work. I would, oh. you could definitely add electronic overlay because spool valves have been used on ZL, ZL1s and race Camaros and and uh, the the Ford GT race car program. All that. <laughs> yeah, those, those are all electronics. So yeah, you can add that overlay. But there's something I love about the simplicity of a really, really well dialed in mechanical setup because it's just one last thing you got to worry about. Yeah. Would you would you like these over a set of Kings? And I ask that because you know everyone all, everyone but, listening is like I got to have a set so, of Kings. So bro. Emmy has her dad's old truck that she inherited, and they have and I have they have Kings. Kings. They have Kings. Yeah, it's a Colorado. And yeah, it's a 2015 Colorado with a lift and total chaos upper control arms with ball joints, and then the 2.5 Kings with reservoirs. And I mean, and they're they're great off road. Yeah. But is it great on the pavement? Like no. Yeah. What I would say is that if you aren't planning on doing anything more and the AEV Bison version of the Colorado pretty much has everything done. Mm-hmm. If you're not planning on going long travel suspension or anything like that, there's no reason to change that suspension at all. It's it's very, very yeah, dialed no, it's in great. factory. Yeah, it's perfect. It's and, great. Emmy, how great. long do you have the truck and what do you plan to do with it? Is it all a short term or long term loaner? And are you No, it's just it's just a short termer. We're actually shooting uh tomorrow with the the ZR2, the Ranger Raptor, and the, the Tacoma TRD Pro. Oh, wow. So I'm shooting a video for Edmund. So we're doing some rock crawling. We're doing some whoops. We're doing an acceleration test. So And I'm excited about that because I haven't had the Ranger Raptor in anything that I thought really challenged it. Like the launch that we went on, the rock crawling section was a joke. We could have done it in two-wheel drive. Yeah. And we didn't do any whoops. We did a fun little rally course, and that was cool. But... Yep. I didn't get to see what those Fox live valves can do in in the whoops. And the regular Raptor is so great in the whoops and so fast. And if you can, like, keep yourself from having a code brown in an F-150 Raptor in the whoops, <laughs> you can go really effing fast. Like, does the Ranger Raptor, is it like, you know, just like a little mini version? Can I hit? Can I go 50? Can I go 55 through the whoops? So that's what I really want to test. I think the big Raptor is going to kill the little Raptor. Just driving those trucks back, back to back. I think that the Colorado AV Bison Edition uh, is probably better than the Raptor in terms of suspension, but I love the uh-huh. Raptor drivetrain. The problem with the Ranger Raptor is only 33s, and it has about the same wheel travel as the uh, ZR2. It's about uh, 10 inches or so. But the Ranger Raptor also doesn't have as much ground clearance, and its front approach angle isn't that great. Right. Um, it's way worse than the than the Colorado um, but it does have more power. It's got that V6, and I've just got the Turbo 4 in the ZR2. But one thing that I really wanted to do was tow with this ZR2 because towing with my 2015 Colorado is a <laughs> nightmare. And all I'm towing is like 5,000 pounds. But coming up the grade to my house, I've got two really steep hills to go up. And when it's hot, my truck hasn't overheated all the way, but it gets real, real close. So this afternoon, I hitched up, buddy, and one thing that I needed to get was a drop hitch because it's so high. I couldn't, my trailer would have been like at a severe angle. So I had to make, I had to install the drop hitch and then took it down, towed it up like 25 miles and it warmed up a little bit, but it didn't come nearly like I didn't panic at all, which was great. And I don't think because now I have a nine speed transmission and in the 2015, it's like a six speed, like it's terrible. So in the older Colorado, like the transmission is just all over the place and it can't figure out where it wants to go. And it's either super high revs or super low revs. And it's so much easier and so much more well sorted in the co- in the new Colorado with the new powertrain and transmission. With the Turbo 4, like coming from a stop, I can feel it like really working to get that momentum going. Whereas in the older one with the V6, it's like, yeah, I got a little bit more power. Like I'm cool. But once it gets going, it's way better. So I wish I could take the Raptor drivetrain and drop it in the Chevy platform and body. Yeah, that'd be that'd be rad. Because that's the best that'd of both be worlds. Here's what I here's what I don't like is on the Chevy Colorado, they don't change the gear ratio because they have that eight speed transmission with a really low first gear, and so they don't uh-huh. change the rear end. I believe if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, it's a three thirty one. Are you stuck with it the way that they're doing with the new full size? When we're talking to uh. 
Remember Spagnola? And uh, we were trying to put out the, 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 the notice to the world that you're stuck with whatever wheels, tires, and gears so, you're given by G, uh, GM now? So, so that's that's two points. Right? Uh, final drive is 342, so 3.42. So normally you would put 35s on something and you would jump that up to uh, probably a 410, maybe maybe even a 456. Yeah. The problem is, is GM keeps it as a, at a 342. So on the 35-inch tire package especially, you can tell there's – so I don't like the Turbo 4 because there's a little bit of turbo lag, but GM's also really mm-hmm. lazy with the transmission. And so those two on top of each other with 35s and a 342 makes driving it in precision things not as crisp, whereas Ford with the Ranger Raptor, it's super crisp. So the fidelity of the throttle input and the fidelity of the inputs in general feel better to me than the Raptor. Uh-huh. Uh, it feels better to me in the Raptor when it comes to drivetrain, but I like the chassis uh-huh. and the suspension tuning and and uh, the tire size of the uh, of the Colorado. Are there any modes, yeah. drive modes on the Colorado to overcome that yeah, lagginess? Yeah, so there's a tow haul mode, there's a Baja mode, normal terrain and off road. And so terrain will put will do like a one pedal drive where like when you lift off the throttle, it'll break. Which I mean, that's that's cool if. You if you're not, but I've I hate always, that. One pedal yeah, drive yeah, yeah. is not a I selling mean, feature to, for me. I hate it. Yeah, it's not for not for me either. But for you know, some people, some people like it. But so there, there are ways that you can get it to open up. But there's no paddle shifters. I don't think there's no manual on offer. And I think the yeah. I think the interiors are kind of a toss up. I like how narrow the center stack is on the Ranger, so you have a lot of knee room. Uh, it doesn't feel cramped yeah. where you sit yeah. like you do on a lot of midsize trucks. But what I don't like is because the screen is high, they put the center vents for the climate control are right in line with the shifter. So if you have your hand on the shifter, if the heater, the AC is on, one hand is way hotter oh, that sucks. or way colder yeah. than every than anything else, yeah. right? And it doesn't have a headlight yeah. switch. The headlights are buried in. Yeah, that's the, the worst. Screen. I don't like that. Oh, that's the worst. It's the worst. But the Ford has the locker button on the screen. It, I know. I, I hate that too. It's like all of those like off road controls, secondary sh- controls should have hard buttons with them. They shouldn't be buried hard in buttons. electronics. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you're oh, trying to navigate so off road, you're, no, you're all over the place. Around. Yeah, there's yeah. no way. There needs to be yeah. you know, hard buttons for that. And and the manufacturers have gotten a little bit too fancy. I mean, you even heard Scout came out and said, hey, we're going to have lots of hard buttons for our secondary features on the vehicle, our secondary controls, because we understand people off roading like to have buttons. And yeah, we like to have buttons. So th- those are kind of the differences. I think uh, the seats are pretty comparable between the two, if I remember correctly. And the highway drive is, is really good on both of them. I just love that you can get 35s yeah. on a midsize truck from the factory. And, you know, the, the Ranger Raptor has a little bit more payload uh, than the Chevy uh, ZR2 um, Bison yeah. on the Colorado. Yeah. But you have to remember, the Chevy's got winch-ready bumpers. It has the rear bumper, the beefy tow hooks, full mm-hmm. skid plating, rock rails, 35-inch tires. So all that stuff you would have done anyway in the aftermarket is already done for you. And a lot of people are going to go add a bunch of that crap to their TRD Pro or the Ranger Raptor to get it up to that level. It just for a full warranty out of the box, 35s on the truck are yeah. absolutely perfect. And I heard a rumor there may be a way to do a bigger tire at some point that we'll talk about in the future. Interest. Oh, oh, I know. There's what you're talking always about. a way to do a bigger tire as long as it involves a sawzall. So you're fine. I'm <laughs> I'm just saying stay stay tuned. All no, right. he means programming in the ECM and such. Well, the, uh, more than that. But. <laughs> All right, Emmy. I know that you recently took out the uh, the lesser midsize trucks. You had a what a Ranger XLT or Sport. Uh, Chevy was it a Trail Boss and then a yeah we t- had Tacoma? so we had a Tremor we had a Ranger Tremor we had the Z seventy one and then we had the TRD off road okay off road I want to hear about those three ve- those three vehicles because that's the middle of the road of the midsize class it's not the full off road packages right it's like the the, the daily weekend warrior um, equipment level yeah yeah and then I want to hear your honest true comments about the new Tacoma the what I really liked about the Tacoma on that. Um, in that video. So that was on Edmonds and that just went live. Like I think this week is we did a little section where like you would get one wheel up and one wheel up going up a hill. And on the idea was go as slow as possible. And like, how far could you get before you had to engage the rear locker? And on all of them, like as soon as the wheel started slipping, it was like, it's not going to go. And I had to do the, I had to hit the locker button, but I didn't have to on the Tacoma because it has that a track thing, which like kind of functions as like a, like a half a locker type of thing. And it made it up this section of the hill in, in going slowly, like not using momentum without locking the rear end. And I'm like, okay, that's, that part's pretty cool. I enjoyed that part. 
once we got to like a high speed wash section, the Tacoma just felt like it was all over the place. I felt like I was really manhandling it to get it to turn. There was a lot of understeer, like understeer and like almost off of the track. And I was like braking and like brushing the brakes and getting the weight transferred to the front end. And it was still just like, you know, I, I want to go right. And it's just totally going straight. Um, of the, all of them, the Colorado in that felt the best in terms of turbo lag and in terms of precise steering in, in a lot of that faster, that a lot of that faster stuff. We did some things with like underbody cameras and like using the cameras to be your spotter. And I think the Ford one in that one, because it does have a pretty crisp forward facing camera. I like the hybrid engine in the Tacoma. I think it's super torquey and I, the power delivery is, is pretty smooth, but I'm still like, I don't like the interior very well. Yeah. Um, it doesn't tow as much as the others. Like, I don't do, know. Do you, I'm still, I'm the, just not on. Yeah. Do you feel like, and, and I'm going to say this and maybe it's too harsh. Do you feel like maybe it's a miss a little bit? Because I, I I think it's a really nice truck. I think that, but it, maybe it's not as much of a departure from the old Tacoma and styling. It's definitely a Tacoma. But then when you get in the interior, it has that very like like cartoony giant screen and switch gear, and yeah. it's not yeah. it's not like sophisticated or elegant at all. It's just like it works good. It's fine. It it just looks like Legos or modular or like cartoony size button on you're kind of like it's not as nice like you get into even a, a a ranger lariat interior or the way that chevy has done a good job of integrating their two big screens in the colorado it just doesn't feel as sophisticated it's more like uh, it feels like a teenager's car than than somebody that has yeah, fifty thousand yeah. dollars to spend on a it feels truck. younger for sure yeah but i think that toyota was really paying attention to their powertrain for this for this new next generation. Cause remember the old Tacoma still had a five G transmission and it was garbage. Oh yeah. It was it garbage. Was awful. Emmy with that turbo, the one that I had recently uh -huh. and drove it around a little bit, um, the Tacoma, it has a fair amount of lag. I noticed on this truck. Now this truck had 30 fives on it and, and a king uh -huh. lift and the whole thing. And it was outfitted, you know, with the whole overlanding packs. So it had yeah. a lot of weight, but it had some lag. Yeah. The power came on like any turbo does. And I expected it to keep pulling, but then it got flat really fast. I don't know if that was just this mm -hmm. this one. How did you feel like that? Because the turbo came up, it felt kind of like a two-stroke bike where it just came up on the pipe and went, and then that was kind of it. It didn't continue to yeah. pull. Did, did you have the hybrid or you just had the regular turbo? Regular turbo. I've driven the hybrid Tundra, but not the... Uh, well, I don't even know totally the different. It's V six versus uh, versus uh, a no, four cylinder. Two, yeah, yeah, so. I understand the four. But I don't think the hybrid is available yet. Is it uh, the hybrid Tacoma? I, think, well, I don't think I it's on the, the street yet. The hybrid. I think actually, I'm getting the hybrid tomorrow because we have a TRD Pro, and all TRD Pros are the hybrid. So, so I think that'll be the first time that I get to sample it. I've sampled it in the Land Cruiser and in the Tundra, and I like it in those two with the V six. So I'm hoping that I will like it also with the four cylinder. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'd have to take a look at the torque curve to see to see what it does, and that it might be a function of having all that extra weight and you know having bigger tire. Were you guys regeared at all for thirty fives? No, no, this the, was not it, geared. It was yeah. not regeared. No. Have, so you, I didn't get a chance to drive the Land Cruiser. I had an opportunity to, and it just didn't work with my schedule. And that's got basically the same powertrain, the four cylinder turbo hybrid that's going to be in the TRD Pro. So that's kind of maybe a yeah. hint at at what's to come what did you like the way the land cruiser drove because i've sat in the gx i've sat in land cruiser both at media the media reveals but i did not have a chance uh -huh. to drive either and i've heard nothing but really good things about how they drive i mean all i did in the land cruiser was we were at pismo this past weekend and so like i drove it on the sand highway back to camp okay, so, so not i didn't i haven't driven on the highway I haven't like, but I mean, the, what was interesting is a friend of mine was in a Bronco and I rode with her and then I got in the Land Cruiser and I drove it and I was like, wow, the power delivery here is like so much smoother than it is in the Bronco. Yeah. And like with that electric assist, like there's that torque comes on sooner and it's just really, really smooth and it's really easy to modulate. And like, I mean, I hope they don't have issues like they're like the Tundras are having with their hybrids and all of those, that recall stuff. But I, you know, I think it's a win for fuel economy and it's a win for performance as long as it's going to keep that Toyota reliability. Out of all the trucks that you've driven this year, any any size, any trim level, any brand, what is your favorite truck and why? 
It's Lizzie R2. I just love it. I love it so much. I don't, I personally don't want a full size truck. They're too big. I don't need anything that big. Um, I, you know, we've already talked about how much we love the suspension on the ZR2. I just, I love the way it looks. I love the colors that I can get. I've got that like cool, like yellow acid, yellow, green that for this week. And it's, I, I just, I love everything about it. Um, I can't afford it. And I have to drive my Colorado until I run it into the ground, which at 200,000 miles now, it's not, it's probably going to happen pretty soon. I'm, I'm definitely a Colorado person. No. Until I drive the Raptor tomorrow in the whoops, and then we'll see. I, I, I want to know, because we've driven the uh, Colorado on 35s, the Jounce uh, shocks through the whoops, and it's stupid. Like, it's, it's stupid good. Yeah. And it's fun. Stupid. And exactly. That, and that chassis is really, really stout. Like, you can huck it off stuff, and it feels really good when it lands, and it feels like you can make a mistake and go in too hot, and it's got enough suspension to, to absorb it and not have any secondary stuff. Like you said, when we drove yeah, the yeah. Ranger Raptors, they were. It was nice, but it wasn't a course that really pushed them all that hard. I, I know that that vehicle no, has a lot I was, it. I was surprised at that launch. I was like, "This is not what I wanted." Well, and you were. You went to the Raptor R launch as well, but you and I were on different waves by like a day, I think, right? And so we didn't get yeah, a chance yeah. to drive together. But I felt like the Raptor R course was really good. Like that. That was I that know. showcased it big time. Whereas. The, the Ranger Raptor felt like there's a lot more to be desired. And then going to the Bronco off-rodeo in Nevada where we took the uh, the Bronco uh, Raptors, or the Braptors as I like to refer to them, that was a crazy course too, especially the Ultra 4 side and the jumps. So I felt like Ford has just been hammering the uh, the capability message with the Raptors, but I felt like a Ranger Raptor was a little lighter um, and it could have it could have done more in my opinion. I don't know. We'll see what happens tomorrow. If I'm, if I call you and I'm like, oh, somebody come recover us. <laughs> hey, I got a toe strap and uh, and I got a full tank of gas. So let me know, Emmy. Yeah. yeah. So um, someone gives you a blank check and says, and they say you have to spend them this way. First blank check is you have to buy an EV truck. Which one is it? An EV truck. Well, I haven't driven the new Silverado yet, but. Everything that I've heard about the next gen Rivian and the improvements that they've made is pretty good. I'm yeah. going to tell you right now so, that when you drive that Silverado EV, you're not going to change your opinion on the Rivian. I just really? saw a SoCal yeah. Edison uh, that truck. Yeah, the, yeah, the uh, Silver Edo. What are what are you calling it? The uh, the Evalanche. E- Evalanche. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. All dressed up in SoCal Edison. Our, our yeah. power uh, provider here in Southern California. And I thought, yeah, that's that's that truck. That's that's literally just like the green uh, energy dog whistle, right? I feel like, like that's the energy company having. We're in all the way. But we I feel got like you're not going to see that for Rivian. Like you're not going to see, uh, you know. Well, they're going uh, after consumers and not fleet, and it's right. way too nice of yeah. a vehicle yeah. for you know doing a hard hat to to bounce around in. Um, I I would agree. I, I love I love the Rivian, and uh, I didn't know that our friend uh, Michael Farah was over there now, and so I'm like, dude, let's get you guys on the podcast. So working on that because what does he do? Oh, good. Uh, product communications for Rivian. He used oh, to be a GM. Damn. And so it's awesome because it's like uh, I got somebody on the inside again because all these Rivian people just moved over to Scout. They moved. They, all my people moved. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, who the hell do I talk to a Rivian now? So uh, I, I'm, I'm I back know. in. I know. Yeah. I know. Are they out of Southern California or is he back east? Uh, I think he's Detroit area, but Rivian okay. has offices all, all over. Yeah. So but so I'm excited about that yeah. because I definitely want to get some seat time in, uh, in the new version of the R1T. Um, I, I think that's just the a super crazy fast one. Sure. Quad motor, thousand, yeah. whatever horsepower. That's yeah. turn. Out of all the electric trucks, that's the most real truck, except for maybe the F-150. But I'll go back to what I said before. I kind of feel like the midsize truck is where you start hitting d- the point of diminishing returns on EV yeah. and doing truck stuff. Yeah. Once you get into full size, it's not as special. Because that truck, and, no, and everything starts getting everything starts getting heavier, and then you want yeah. more battery because you want more range, yep. and then it gets heavier, and yep. then you need more battery, and it's just like, and then you end up with the Hummer. It, it's I was so going to exactly. ask you if you drove a Hummer. Have you been in? Have you? Had it's one terrible. Before? It's terrible. Yeah, they're. they're I mean, it's super fun. Heavy. Like, it's it, a party yeah, trick. It's fun, but it's yeah, exactly it's 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 a showpiece, and I mean, it's it's super fun to do the watch to freedom. Like that's really cool, and like the crab walk is like cool technology and all that stuff. But I don't know how useful it is. And 
I got stuck on a hill because I didn't know that you had to press the front locker button for five seconds before it will engage. Did you get stuck the way you got me down. stuck in a certain Nissan Patrol in a Moroccan sand dune no, that one time? No, no, no. Oh, it was I different than that? Got, I never got you stuck. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you were behind the wheel and we had no more forward motion, but in a sand dune with camels walking around us. Am I remembering that <laughs> one? Is that one that where she? Ho- we were stuck, though. Is that the one where she we hotboxed you? <laughs> well, that was, there's a lot of those. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we've been on a lot of trips together. Okay, so then uh, that was one blank check. So then you got another okay. blank check, and it's going to be for uh-huh. it's going to be for uh, internal combustion engine, full size truck, so three quarter one ton. I mean, I don't really need big trucks, so I would look at um, maybe the F one fifty regular hybrid. Can I have a regular hybrid? Because uh, then I sure. could get good mileage while towing. I mean, I'll I'll give you a pass. I didn't say hybrid or not, but I was thinking old school. Yeah, but like, you said anything right. last time, so. But you said I ICE, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let it have hybrid. All right. Yeah, that's okay. a solid that, yeah. That's a solid so the truck. F-150, okay. I think hybrid makes more yeah. sense in a full-size truck than a pure EV does. Sure. Like I just I think it works. I, yeah, it, for sure. For zero sure. range anxiety. Yeah. And if I'm getting an F-250 or uh, or, or, or uh you know, super duty, heavy duty, whatever. I'm getting F two fifty Tremor seven three V eight. That's gonna okay. be the 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 big boy that I yeah. get. Yeah. Okay. Such a great truck. Yeah, those tremors are great, especially especially if you need if you're doing uh like chasing down in Baja. You get those and you have so and you can have the power pro power on board, which is amazing. And you just have all that right there, that generator right there. You can run a welder and you can get the new um BFG HD KO2s or like there's like a, a new HD all terrain for those things and you're just like you're, you're those things set. Like, those are the HD terrains and that is a great tire and in fact uh, uh, side note since you have a, a Bison edition which is the AEV overlay on the Colorado that HD terrain was co-developed with AEV uh, in the 40 inch size for the, to replace what they've been putting on the Prospector XLs and so those are going to be going on the factory ones uh, pretty soon I can't picture what those look like uh, it's it's just a big ultra. It's, it's the same one that was in their booth at SEMA, the forties on the GMC. Yeah. Oh, okay. On the those um, are pretty aggressive. What was that? The uh, the it was Grande, the trade bed? The Sierra Grande. Yeah. It's just cool because that way, I mean, like KO twos are great and KM threes are great. KO three, like all those are great, but they're not necessarily made for the weight of a yeah. heavy duty truck, and especially not for once you load the bed with all the crap that you need when you're down there in Baja chasing races. So. You know that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, huge, Unfortunately, huge load rating. I don't have any money or people to chase Buddy, so like I do everything out of my little mid size. Well, Lightning will help you chase. Hey, I'll co-drive. Lightning can chase. Let's do it. We'll help you, you out. You cannot fit in Buddy. A hundred percent, you would not fit in that car. Well, well, that that's disappointing. Why not? I could fit passenger. Mm, yeah, I could. Uh, I'll get in there. Can we go? Can we? Can we try? Cramped. Let's go. Let's let's drive you to your try. house and we'll see who fits in Buddy best. Listen, I'm going to be there. I'm I'm going to race at Glen Helen uh, July 13th and 14th. It's like some short coursey racing things with Mojave Operate Enthusiasts. So it's like an hour heat on Saturday, an hour heat on Sunday. I'm nice. going to go in limited sportsmen. So if you guys want to come out, you can you can come hang out and um, try to fit in the car. Is- you won't, but I'd uh, <laughs> like to see it happen. But if we can, can we go for a lap? Um, do you have all the retired <laughs> safety gear? She just burped. Wow. <laughs> burped on the air. That's awesome. Oh, did you hear that? Well played. I smelled it. Wow. <laughs> hey, when funny. you go out there, is it going to be like that picture on your Instagram where you and Buddy are getting uh, run over by a uh, trophy truck with a uh, be- God, I hope not. Ba- beetle uh, body on it? That was so that, scary. That is guys. one of the scariest. Here, I'm going to pull this picture up for, for lighting. Because it's one of those pictures that you you're like you don't realize how small Buddy is until it's a Miata. Until you see that, no, dude, I mean, look it at that. It's so oh scary. my god! It looks okay. like a micro was, machine. And that's not the only one. <laughs> that's not the only truck that almost hit us. And the thing is, is there was like six media vehicles right there. So that was during King of the Hammers, and they yeah. do like a desert a desert race the weekend before. And I'm like, yeah, I'll enter it. And there were all these media vehicles, and I'm like. Someone just come, please, and yank me out. I don't care if I get disqualified. This is a safety issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we're like, I can't, I, what I, if I could get out of the car safely and like dig and max tracks, I could self recover. But, but not there in that spot. Are 6, 8,000 pounds trophy trucks coming towards me. Somebody needs to yank me B- out. By the way, you're on the inside of a turn on a blow, what looks it's like bad. a blind turn, yeah. and you're buried to your hubs. 
on basically on the Miata. It's bad. And they are literally we on a that foot. Turn and we weren't ready for it. And I was just like, F-. and then I was in that, I was in the, in the ruts and I couldn't get out of it. And it just like, just, they were too deep and just high centered. And I was done. I was done. Crazy how close that it's thing. Bad. It looks like it's like just barely a couple feet away from your car. That was uh, so, Bl- Blake Wilkie's car. Yes. So if you know from yeah, uh, Blake Shreddy. Wilkie. Yeah, <laughs> Shreddy. Uh, uh, so, okay, so, Thank God, like, he's a good driver, so he was able to react quick enough to make sure that, like, you know, he didn't kill us. But Yeah, that would was, not have been good. Was, was, <laughs> she was just no, out there. She was like a no. speed bump. No, that would not. <laughs> that's not funny. But no. you know what, though? Buddy, <laughs> lose is my the, friend. Buddy is the first Miata to have raced at King of the Hammers and finished. I mean, that's huge. That is huge. Although Buddy yeah, recently tried to burn cool. himself down because he had smoke in the cockpit. What was that all about? Oh, that's because Emmy doesn't know shit about wiring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. How, how bad was yeah. it? Basically, there was a, a hot wire that grounded out, and it was um, some of the wires that have, like, you know, the little plastic covering, little plastic tubing thing that you could put them in, but yeah. not all of them are in that. And um, it was it was melting that plastic thing so but all i saw was smoke and i just went ah smoke in the cabin and i opened the door and like you know like seat fell off in one just like one little twist and i opened the door and i basically like fell out because i didn't know if the car was on fire or not um and then i realized that it was just the wire but after i figured out what wire it was i didn't want to take the chance of like okay but what else has it burned out yeah. like has it melted the insulation on some other wire that now is going to like burn so I put him on the trailer and I did not really drive around at Pismo this weekend, which was really sad. But I've got a friend coming on Friday. We're going to look at it, make sure that I'm not going to die. Good. And uh, yeah. We, we can't yeah. we can't lose you. One more burning question before we let you go. And that's, do you have... Oh, like an STD? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> what do you have more of in your house right now? Cold cans of Diet Dr. Pepper or cats? I have more empty cans of Diet Dr. Pepper. I'm sitting here next to four empties. And how many cats? um, It was trash day. It was recycling day today. And I think there were like eight empty 12 packs that got recycled. (laughs) I have a picture of my desk at home with like 18 cans of Dr. Pepper after like a (laughs) two-week writing binge. And I just kept grabbing them. And they're, they're just like stacked around me. And I took a picture because I'm like, this is weeks worth of me just powering through writing, and I have like a I'm encased in a case of Dr Pepper. The calorie, the caloric difference between hers and yours, is very different. Ah, uh, that's true, but so is the octane. So mm-hmm. <laughs> not so much. She's got a can in her hand. Diet Dr Better on demand. Flying high over the land with cast by her side and the plan. <laughs> In a fancy car she drives Expensive seat heaters keeping her alive A little too escapes her stride That's your new uh, theme song. I, did you guys have that written just for me? Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe we used a little AI on that maybe, for fun. Maybe we did. Oh we've, my uh, god, that's amazing. <laughs> we've gone crazy with the AI lately. That's amazing, you guys. I love it so much. All right, well, you have to take us out with the best yeah buddy ever. Okay, you ready? Do it with a belch. With a belch? No. I I can't. I already finished. I already finished my soda. So that was going to require another one. All right. We're going to mute the mics. Here we go. Here. Three, two, one. Yeah, buddy. That was stellar. Not as good as the original. I, I'm, I'm a pretty strong. I'm an OG like fan myself. Yeah, I so. like that one, though. That was good. Well, you know, the old one was, it was, it was, it just came out of me. It was very authentic. I'm leaving that joke alone. And that's our friend, <laughs> Emmy Hall. And. We love you. We mean it. And uh, thanks for uh, hanging out with us. All right. Love you a long time. All right. Love you, mean it. Bye. All right. See ya. All right. It's time to check in with the five star hotline. You can call us anytime, day or night, 657 205 6105. Oh, come on and be part of the show. Call the five star hotline. 657 205 6105. It's the five star hotline. Five star. Hey guys, this is Stephen Watson, longtime listener and longtime caller. So I had an idea for a quick deep dive if there is such a thing. Um, I heard Holman got fancy M's oil racing grease for tie rod ends and such. We actually like using the M's oil off-road grease 
because we feel like it has been formulated for pins and heavy, non-rotating, high-impact contact surfaces, you know, like pins and heavy equipment, which seems to fit what we do with tie rod ends pretty close. So anyway, that might be something to talk with somebody at Amsoil about and kind of give some recommendations for some of the places where some of these products go and maybe uh, some oddball uses for things like that. I don't mind keeping around an extra tube of grease to to have the right stuff to, to make tie rod ends last longer, and it, it seems like they do. They definitely don't wear out quickly with uh, with the M's oil pin grease in it. So anyway, there's your idea. You better run with it now. Bye. <laughs> so, in fact, uh, I just talked to Amsoil this week, so there's a bunch of things that we're working on. Um, so our buddy uh, Brad Lovell is getting ready for a uh, race coming up. Uh, we got Birds All getting ready for Bonneville. We've got one of maybe two, Len, maybe Mark, maybe Alex from Amsoil, coming in to do exactly what Stephen was talking about, and that's talk about the product lineup uh, and different greases and stuff. Like, just looking at Amsoil's grease. And we didn't put Steven up to make this call. He owns Off-Road Design, and obviously... He doesn't need us. No, he doesn't need us. Uh, but he's an avid listener, and uh, he deals with the heaviest of heavy-duty, off-roading, crazy, you know, Chevy square bodies on 42s, crawling all over stuff, right? Um, but you go to Amsoil's page. You got uh, Amsoil NLGI number two, 100%. This is the polymeric truck chassis and equipment grease. The one I think he's talking about is the one in the yellow tube. That's the, the NLGI number two. 100% synthetic poly- polymeric off-road grease. Then you've got NLGI number one. You've got synthetic water-resistant grease. you got NLGI number one uh, version of the off-road grease. You've got Amsoil Dominator racing grease. Uh, you've even got uh, high-viscosity lith- lithium complex grease, spray grease, and synthetic food grade grease for like machinery and stuff. <laughs> wow. So I mean there's okay. there's a gazillion things and I'm sure a lot of these products overlap, but we want to get somebody from Amsoil on yeah. to kind of walk us through because they do have so many options. It's not always clear what the best one is for your application. So Holman, do you recall a couple of years ago when I went with Gail to Amsoil's corporate office in Superior, Wisconsin? And we shot four videos. We spent three full days there. And when I say full days, I mean from the the moment they opened the doors to yep. the time they kicked us out. Yep. The reason we teamed up with Amsoil in the way back, and forgive me if I've told this story before, when we were developing the diff covers, before we even made our own diff cover at Banks, we wanted to get numbers and find out at what point oil was breaking down as far as temperature, like when it would oxidize. We had all these questions about rear differential oil nobody would tell us we called all the big brands you'd see stacked up on uh, the shelf at o'reilly or craigan like we call i call i i did i my job was to go get numbers and nobody would freaking share and i called amsoil and they said oh yeah it oxidizes at this temperature and we found this and they were just sharing information we go okay this is interesting that led to a longer term relationship we found ourselves partnering with the company and then going out to wisconsin to see the facility. We shot these four videos and we walked through the lab and we spent a whole day in the lab. So, in so the you, lab. real quick, you know that we're trying to get us out there where we yes. can do a, a walkthrough yes. of their facility in Wisconsin. Are you going with me or is that going to be a me on my own thing? No, I go. All right. Because we're, we're working with, I, we're actively trying to figure that out I know what to right expect. Now. I've been there. No, I know, but we, cool. haven't, we haven't brought that to the Truck Show Podcast listeners. So. I th- th- That's fine. That's fine. I don't want to name names, but I was at another manufacturer of oils and such in Southern California, and I was in their lab. This is seven, eight years ago. And I thought, oh, that's what a lab looks like. And then I go to Amsoil's lab. Way different. Way, way different. I mean, this one was like the one in Southern California here, and it's a brand that you guys know, was kind of like not 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 a sham. But it didn't feel like state it of the did, art. It felt like it was built for people to walk through and be impressed. Yeah. But it didn't, mm-hmm. some guys, two dudes in lab coats and that was like yeah. it. And a couple of machines that looked like coffee makers. Then we go over to Amsoil and like, okay, this is a real laboratory well, with like I, I want to more go. than a dozen like dudes that actually have degrees, chemical degrees. No, I, right? I've I've literally been using Amsoil personally for a long time through Four Wheeler Magazine, especially the uh, the um, Gear Lube, which I I freaking love that stuff. It's awesome. And then when I was running Diesel Power Magazine, they were a sponsor and and got to use their stuff and see competitors using their stuff on crazy diesel racing builds. 
and got to know the people over there. And it's been, you know, that's, I'm glad that relationship continued on through banks and into the podcast, but we really do are, you know, we really are customers of theirs already. We're users of the product. I mean, we didn't know what to expect when we went out there. We were like, yeah, well, let's do business with them. And then we saw it and to impress Gail is really tough. And they did that, like in spades. It was super cool. So anyway, thank you, Stephen, for that suggestion. I'm sure we're gonna. Hit yeah, we're up working on it. Amzo, yeah. yeah, yeah. Five star. Five star. Five star. Hotline. Lightning Holman. What's up, guys? It's Rich. I had an interesting conversation with Ayla this morning on the way to school. Parked in the parking lot at her school was a brand new Nissan Pro 4X. Okay, I swear this is the actual calls. I mean, <laughs> obviously our listeners understood the homework assignment, uh, but we did not ask anybody to regurgitate all of our sponsors. But we're glad that you guys uh, feel the relevance of having our partners on the show because, again, these are companies that we are customers of that we believe in. So it's great that you guys are using that in Some your Some of you calls. don't believe that we didn't set these up. <laughs> no, There's nothing we can do about it. We we didn't, but we're this is the call we got to, we're going to play. And she is uh, that gray color. I don't, I don't know the color name of it, but it's like a, gray. Looks like a flat gray kind of. She goes, "Hey, uh, Papa, you don't have any small trucks. You should, we should uh, get one of those." I said, "Oh, you like that one?" She goes, "Well, yeah. If, if you uh, if you have any issues with picking it, just talk to Sean." <laughs> so apparently, I'm supposed to talk to Sean about uh, <laughs> our interest or her interest rather in a Nissan uh, Pro 4X. A little um, frontier. So, guess what we're doing on Saturday? We're going to Nissan of Gilroy, and we are going to go test drive a Frontier Pro 4X. Wow. I like it. No guarantees or any of that sort, but it uh, should be fun. Peace out. Keep the five stars uh, five star and uh, keep monitoring those parameters. Lightning, I'm waiting to hear from you. What help you need with your, uh, with your garage? Talk to you later. Bye. Yep, uh, we got that handled. Yep, he's just trying to work out the schedule. <laughs> he's going to come over there with a coring drill. We'll <laughs> more on that subject later. Thank Down you, uh, Rich. Line. Appreciate that. You're the man. Hey, truck show, truck show. That's the whole message. <laughs> but he calls back. He calls back. <laughs> Listen, you can't laugh at him. Uh, That's okay. how our you edit this show. You know how much we do that. Yeah. You can't laugh at our listener for doing it. I'm not laughing. I just said it was funny that it was just that. Anyway, 657-205-6105. It is the... Five Star. Five Star. Five Star. Hotline. Hello, Truck Show Podcast. I was recently at a shop dropping off my 19 Nissan Frontier work truck for some... I swear we did not this put anybody insane. up to that, but... Thanks, guys. We, uh, I, we're glad you get the homework assignment, but I... I feel dirty a little bit, right? I know. I mean, it's. I can't. These are the calls that came in. I'm playing them in order. That's funny. This is. A, I don't even know who the dude is. No one's going to believe this. No, but keep playing it anyway. Do we, do? Do we keep, no, keep, going? keep going? Some AC service, and there was a there was a TRX sitting in the parking lot, and so I asked the the guy at the counter, you know, who's who had the TRX, and he's like, oh, it's just a customer truck that came in with a no start. But then he goes, but it's a funny story. He says, I go to run the run the VIN to check the truck in and the VIN doesn't come up. And he said that he reached out to Ram and they are like, that VIN does not exist for a TRX. And he calls, <clears throat> calls the DMV and they say it doesn't exist as well. Um, so he's, so what do you think? It's stolen. Stolen. Yeah. It's gotta be right. Like they, they, they found a, a Ram shell mm -hmm. and they transferred all the TRX parts over to build a, some sort of, custom trx interesting well let's keep playing trying to trying to figure out why why it doesn't exist and with all of them getting stolen it made me think it was a another stolen one that someone had maybe changed the changed the bin plate or something like that but anyway i just felt it was interesting with all of the talk of stolen trx interesting this one was happening right here love the show keep it up bye all right, thank you, mystery caller. So this probably is it a VIN swap because the VIN's in a bunch of places. To and me, it's it feels like a VIN swap. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you just go under the frame or in the door jam, or you probably looked at the one in the windshield. Yeah, right? and, and didn't and then, check it anywhere else. Yeah, because it's just that's just riveting. Well, in the TR, the, well, the TRX frame is completely different than a regular RAM too. It's not just like you can just transfer everything. I don't know. That's that's sketch as hell though. I know, but a hey, uh, and by the way, shout out to uh, Mike Rice. F you, Mike. Down at uh, I love Mike. 
that he keeps sending me photos of TRXs with broken windows. He's like, another theft recovery. I'm like, Mike, I don't need to see these again. This is bad. Just uh, it's, like, it's like an accident it. victim. You know I can't do? unsee it. You should be uh, like uh, one of those uh, angels, like investor angel. You should take those ballards and put them in the, just gift them to the back, uh, the pickup truck bed of one of those that's broken. Well, I'm made of money two. now? Yeah. What are we talking about? Just say uh, the lightning angel came and wants you to get your glass fixed and your truck's I'm telling you, it's a freaking business. I'm not saying any more th- about it because I'm going to make a mint selling these things, installing them all over Southern California. 657-205-6105. Leave us a message anytime, any day. You eat. All right, uh, Holman's parsing out the mail. We actually print these things off. If you're new to the show, we don't just read them off the screen. We print them. I don't know why yeah, we, we waste print a them. lot of paper because you do. you can't read. That's not that's not why. <laughs> why the why is I it? I think because it's easier to divvy them up. Fun. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, he tr- it's like trade. It's like a uh, uh, poker cards. Or it's like a. Uh, but are we playing Uno or something? Yeah, yeah, it's like you, me, you, me. It's the way he does. Okay, it. so I need to I need to dive down to the bottom of this. Um, so you know our friend. Wait a minute, is this a prepare to dive? Prepare to dive. Hi, Captain. Captain, we're too is it deep. A, is it a deep dive or no? It, I think it could be. So. Uh, there's no <laughs> such thing as too deep. Well, it's not yet. Oh, 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 no. oh. The, the, the sub, stopping? the sub oh. is still at the dock. Oh, so remember we were talking about Pike. Is this a nuclear Dude, sub? Will you shut up no. for a second so I can do a podcast? <laughs> Jesus. So <laughs> remember when we were talking about Pike's Peak, and we both said, "Oh, the thing is, electric vehicles is cheating because they don't suffer the same issues that internal combustion engine." Faces going to the top with you know altitude. Density. That's what I said, right? And I was the only thing they do suffer from is cooling because there's Wrong. not enough. No, wrong. What do you mean? No, so of course our, they suffer from cooling. There's the air density. No, so you said that's there. the only thing they suffer from. I don't remember the conversation. What I'm saying no, is no, right? You were, I, I was just were saying you that here two seconds ago. No, no, I was saying that it's unfair that they're they're going to dominate I know, forever. None, none of this matters. Okay, that's well, not the well, point. What's the story? It's not the point of the conversation. Sure. What is? You said just now they suffer from the only thing they suffer from is cooling. That's not the only thing they suffer from. Is what I'm trying to explain to you. Tell me more. All right. So our our longtime listener and uh, friend over at Dana, Seth Metzger, who's the senior vice president of electrification at Dana, so like pretty important, Mm -hmm. sends me this note. Hey, hope you're doing well. Listen to the most recent podcast where you talked about Pikes Peak and EVs ruining the world. Just kidding. Uh, During the podcast, you mentioned that EVs don't have issues at altitude, so it isn't fair for ICE vehicles. That isn't exactly true. At altitude, there's an issue. I swear this is real. You're not going to believe me. (laughs) Okay. At altitude, there's an issue with cosmic rays impacting the semiconductor installation <laughs> resistance. Who's Ma- talking about this? Many inverters derate performance at altitude to prevent failure. We design ours to not have an issue above 2,000 meters, but many don't. And then he sends me a link to it. And I'm you like, must be out of your mind. I'm like, what? Tell me more. And so he sends me this link and he says, read about halfway down for a competitor's inverter, look at the altitude. And so he's like, I'm not a mechanical engineer, uh, but uh, I'm trying to figure out some more info. And I'm like, dude, we need you guys on the podcast because who knew? I had, he's I had no idea. Co- cosmic rays. Yes. That ain't true. That's not true. So get your facts straight. Seth. <laughs> no, <laughs> Seth, is, Seth is a reliable and credible uh, no, I know he uh, is. addition to the Truck Show podcast, a resource, I should I'm say. I'm just funning with that. it, but seriously, Cosmic Rays. I, I had You're no saying idea. There was, there's no ionosphere or whatever the sphere is that, that blocks it out is not there? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's not just cooling, there's other things. It just happens to be Cosmic Rays, and I thought we should tell people that. <laughs> I, we'll have rays. Dana on to yes. talk more about it, because how that's fascinating to me. What do you do? Oh, they're trying to electrify airplanes. What happens when an airplane is at 35,000 feet, 40,000 feet, flying through the air with its electric motor, know, and its second. inverter's like, Aah! Hey, Siri, call Matt Gamble mobile. Calling Matt Gamble mobile. See, I don't mind calling Matt late at night, so we'll just see what he has he to does. say. He does. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not. He worked at Rocketdyne. I get it. 
Good evening, and thank you for calling the cell phone of Matt Gamble. <laughs> Matt Gamble speaking. He does that all the time, by the way, Holman. Uh, you're on the air, Mr. Matt Gamble. I think legally we have to say that. We have a, a, a question. Are you recording me right now? Yes, you're well, being recorded you're, in the state of California. You're live, yes. Do there we, have, we go. Do we there have we your go. permission? Ah, stop it. <laughs> Are you telling me to stop it after what you just pulled like one call ago? He knows we're, okay. he knows we're good. Okay. Here's the thing. We were talking about ice engines versus EV engines in the context of Pikes Peak and racing. And Lightning said, I said, uh, you know, there's EVs don't suffer from anything. Lightning goes, yes, they do. They suffer from cooling at altitude, blah, blah, blah. So a typical conversation of two knuckleheads sitting in a backyard shed. But then my friend, who is the senior vice president of electrification at Dana, texts me and says, that's not exactly true that inverters suffer degradation at altitude due to cosmic rays, and he would have more information for us. Well, I'm calling you because you used to work at Rocketdyne, and if anyone knew about cosmic rays, it would be a guy who flew rockets. <laughs> don't, don't flip a bit. Also, don't forget you're going to suffer from uh, arrow effects, right, which is, which is both ice and EVs. Aerodynamics, yes. But, yep. but what say you about cosmic rays affecting inverters? Do you, do you here's, know anything Here's about the that? specific uh, uh, wording he said. He says, well, I'm not a, he says so first off, I'm not an electrical engineer. Second, we're talking 14,000 feet, right? It's about the top of Pikes Peak. Sure, correct. He says at altitude, there's an issue with cosmic rays impacting the semiconductor insulation resistance. Many inverters derate performance at altitude to prevent failure. We design ours not to have an issue above 2,000 meters, but many don't. I just thought that was freaking interesting. Does that sound legit to you, Mr. Gamble? That that is interesting. Again, I'm not an EE, and uh, I've I've never personally looked into that. What good are you to to us then? <laughs> I mean, other than the headache rack for Lightning CRX, uh-huh. he's funny. <laughs> that, that, that he hasn't built. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it turns out uh, Matt, Mr. Matt Gamble is a good engineer and uh, made something that's expensive to build. Oh, really? Go yeah. figure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll happen. Uh, it will. The, it price, will. the price was right for the design, though. <laughs> there it is. All right. Well, you're of no use to us like normal, Matt, but we love you. All right. Well, that sounds good. Okay. All, All right. right. Lighting, we'll see you at 6 a.m. for carpool. No, no, no. Perfect. He, he's not doing that anymore. <gasps> he uh, did. did uh, we should recap and tell you what we did. Well, he called me and uh-huh. said, hey. Uh, I don't want to ride with you anymore. No, no he said, hey. Because you, you chew, you chew <laughs> no. your breakfast burritos too no, loud while he, we're driving. He got into a little uh, fender bender. And messed up the flying couch, oh. right? Which is this Buick wagon. Literally bent the fender. Bent the fender, like literally. But yeah. it's still drivable. Okay. Yeah. And, he, and he says, hey, can you come out to a junkyard and help me tear apart? What the hell? What did we cut apart? Skylark. Skylark. Oh. That's right. We chopped up a Skylark. So some of the body panels are the same. And we were out in the, the middle of Riverside on a hot day. And it was right next to a grease factory. And it smelled so good. It was just delightful. So it what, was what does that have to do with... Anything. I'm just telling you, we were out there cutting apart a car to save mats. W- was this and your we're weir- graft these old car parts on the mat? I feel like this is a, a weird flex times two. One, lightning has tools and was in a junkyard, and two, lightning helps his friend. A little bit, <laughs> a little bit. I'm and gonna, and three, he 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 survived the the stink pit of the <laughs> grease factory. Awesome. It was it was seriously awful, and the siltiest silt ever. We were just coated in dirt and and. In grossness. You guys are a good time. Yeah, it was fun though. I, had right. a good, I, had a... I, I will say though, uh, the points for Southern California. A lot of people complain about California, but wrecked the car on Monday was pulling apart a 1966 Buick on Saturday in a junkyard. So we got the goods, and we also have we every got, we got kind the good of, stuff in LA. We have every kind of food imaginable in LA too, and it's all good. What does that have to do that with That is true. And then, just... and then when they're done cooking it in Greece, we know where that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Tip your waitress. There we go. All right, Matt. You're the best. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. All right, guys. See ya. All right, bye. Mopar Sands Mojo from uh, Ray. With Tim Kaniskis and Jim Morrison both leaving, and what seems like non-American, non-enthusiast heads coming to replace them, it feels like Tavares is quickly draining the American soul out of the former Chrysler Corporation brands. That's sad, but I hope I'm wrong. Please, please tell me I'm wrong. I don't know if he said it like that, but that's what Ray wrote. Uh, TBD, but yeah. I'm not going to say you're wrong at this point. We don't know. Definitely. You don't have any inside knowledge. Nope, definitely uh, a little bit worried. Mm-hmm. Seeing all the people that are uh, that have left or are leaving, and the the you know carnal knowledge and corporate knowledge and 
things that matter to uh, to the Jeep brand and people. I just all that stuff. I I, I do worry. I uh, got this email from Jason Gaynor. Says theft to turn and diesel inappropriateness. Good day, mm-hmm. gents. Couple of things. First, lightning on this week's episode. I heard your motion sense deterrent. I have the same one. Actually, <laughs> two of them. Yeah, forty buck club. He says combined <laughs> with your bollards. I hope this highly effective device works well for you. I can verify that it keeps deer and other pesky animals out of my landscaping, azalea garden, etc. However, I would not recommend this device solely to deter cartel or other organized crime members. I think your ballers will be more effective. Best of luck. <laughs> Agreed. On the topic of diesel inappropriateness, I have two different diesels, a 2019 L5P and a 2022 Jeep EcoDiesel Rubicon. The L5P is used for towing 6,500 plus or minus a poundage of a wake boat. That's a Duramax, Tractor by the way. or enclosed trailer hauling side-by-sides. Not anything over 10K but I've not had any major issues so far at 105,000 miles. I have had to replace two sensors, EGT related, after towing around 7,000 pounds of tractor for two days. It was in regen a lot that day. Yes, a gasser would work, but would not be a safe hauling 250 miles with a boat and kids. Why does the EcoDiesel not seem to have the same problem with regen and DPF as the larger block engines? Same with the 3-liter Duramax, question mark. The Jeep does regen, but it's not nearly as violent or noticeable as the L5P. In fact, I can barely notice it. The only reason I know is that the DEF needs refilling occasionally. Thirdly, I ordered the Rudolph Diesel book, and it is a great read. Uh, And lastly, as a proud North Carolinian where Pepsi originates, I must agree that Coca-Cola is far superior I have visited the original location where Pepsi Cola oriented in New Bern, North Carolina. Even there, it's not great. Tolerable, but not not great. Next time, I won't wait as long to email. Not as frequent as Trevor, and I'll keep it shorter. Keep up the great work. My favorite podcast of the week. Every week, appreciate your dedication to the craft. Jason Gaynor. So he's asking why the Duramax are different. Yeah, yeah the regions. Ooh. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, the Eco Diesel, if you don't work it, will plug up a DPF and will force you to regen. Yeah. It'll say on the dash that the uh, DPF uh, or that you need to drive. Ooh, they, both what, I, they both do that. No, no, but, I understand that. Uh, but I'm just saying it's not like the light duty diesel is not the same as the bigger one. It will get to the same point where it'll say, okay, you have to go for a drive so this thing can clear out. Yeah, the uh, the bummer with the eco diesels is, to my knowledge, there's no way to uh, command a stationary region. You can't pull over at a rest stop or, you know, in an open lot or something and command a stationary region where you, the elevate the RPMs are elevated and you get it really shooting hot. Shooting flames and, out the yeah, back. Literally, yeah. So on the, on the Duramax, on the 17 to 23, you can you can literally pull over and it's... But not factory. You have to do it with iDash, right? Yeah, an iDash, okay. correct. Yeah, so we reverse engineered and you can... It's funny because it runs you through a bunch of prompts. You've never done it, but no. it's just like, is the hood up? Yes. Is your def level half or above? Yes. And you go a bunch of yes, no. And then there's one, it says, one of the prompts says hit the down arrow. And people keep pressing yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, and right. they miss the down because it's a trick. Right. We want to make sure you're paying attention. Of They're course. Like, I couldn't do it. I'm like, did you read all the prompts? You're like, I read all the prompts. It's like it's filling not- out those federal it's forms where that yes. one question it's is the switched. the one. Yeah, yeah, we did that. We're like, on one of it, it's Man, like, push the down. Man, <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. But dude, I tell guys all the time about the regions, the stationary region, I go, I want you to command one when you can. You have to be over 90% full on the DPF. That's so there's 90% blockage. So, yeah, blockage, exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty uh, plugged up. I said, it's going to be the loudest thing you've ever heard your truck do. And you're going to worry. And you're going to freak out. You're going to want to stop it. You're going to think that your your truck is and going don't to do explode. it around like small children or high grass. Anything, because it is, it is 1,100 degrees at the tip of the tailpipe. It's crazy hot. And... It goes up to 2,500 RPM and stays there for 20 minutes. That big fan, that 36-inch fan or whatever, 32-inch fan, is at max speed to keep the engine cool, and the in- and the hood has to be up. So all these factors together, it's mind-bogglingly loud, but it clears it all out. Why is the uh, Duramax regening more often? More unburnt fuel, far larger turbo, so you need more fuel to spool it up. There's a lot of factors. Uh, I would be lying if I told you that I could give you all those factors and have it make sense because I'm not an engineer, but I will say that that's kind of a known thing. The bigger the engine, the higher the displacement, the bigger the turbo, it just takes more fuel to spool it up. And that fuel oftentimes goes unburnt and ends up in the DPF. All right. Does that Uh, make sense? Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, Moving on to this email uh, called Update and Advice. And this is from one of my absolute favorite uh, longtime listeners, uh, Stephen Hux. He may have taken me for a tour of a submarine in dry dock one time. Is that the one with the Truck Show Podcast stickers Uh, hidden uh, somewhere? I'm... uh, 
I'm not going to confirm or deny. I'm just going to mm-hmm. say the Plaz- plausible deniability. I'm just going to say a care package went to them and they did with it what they please. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, he says, gents, due to some unfortunate circumstances, I've had a bit of a change in my vehicle lineup. My wife was hit in her 2019 Nissan Armada a couple of weeks ago on the way home. Thankfully, she was fine, minus some whiplash, but I can't say the same for the Optima that hit her. I'm so grateful that the Armada took such good care of her. This is her second major accident in 20 years, and both times it was in a Nissan, and she walked away unscathed from both of them. After rushing to the accident and seeing the damage, the wife and I decided we needed something bigger and safer than the 2016 Wrangler Rubicon, so I got her a one-owner local single-dealer service 2021 Armada in Hermosa Blue and got myself a 2021 Titan in Baja Storm. Nice. We love them both and couldn't be happier with the choice. This is our sixth Nissan and my second Titan. After this incident, I think we're going to be Nissan lifers. Only downside is I have trouble finding a rack to transport my kayaks. That works with the Backflip MX-4. That's a tonneau cover. Uh, they're both 12 feet and about 100 pounds each. We found several options that still allow full use of the cover for other manufacturers, but the Titan seems left out. I figured between you two, your Nissan connection, you could hook me up with some advice to be able to use the cover and still keep this 28-year naval officer on the water with the kids. Looking forward to the advice and keep monitoring those parameters. And that's uh, our uh, our friend Steven. Master, monitor key engine parameters. So I don't know if I remember correctly, the, uh, the backflip MX-4 is kind of flush with the top of the bed rails, but like the stake pockets and the top of the bed rail itself are open. And I know that there's a few racks out there that are universal that sit on that top of the bed. So something... Is uh, this where we harass our friends over at EGR to make one? Uh, we could harass them to make something, or uh, we could uh, uh, maybe recommend, like, Thule has a couple different options of a uh, collapsible rack made out of aluminum, but it has feet that sit on top of the bed rail. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that... Like requ- a modular style? Yeah, and I don't know if that requires you to use the Utilitrack rails to tie into, but on the back flip, it seems like you could flip open the tonneau and then have access to that. So you wouldn't be able to have the tonneau closed, but you could still use a rack like that without taking the tonneau off. I think. I haven't looked in a while. Obviously, the the Titans, they're just not as big as uh, uh, other vehicles in terms of sales volume. So a lot of manufacturers have stuff that would interface, but on that particular truck might not. Um, so I would go to, uh, there's a really good site that I like called eTrailer.com. I love uh, eTrailer.com. Super good prices, actually. And uh, yeah, I bought uh, e-track through them and D-rings and all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, so uh, I, I would check them out and just see if you can find something universal. The other option might be one of those aluminum or steel overlanding racks that also mounts to the bed. So maybe don't think about it from the standpoint of I need like a Thule or or action sports kind of rack. Maybe go to the overlanding side and see mm. if there's something that would bolt and use your uh, stake pockets and do it that way. Any idea if Lightner makes one? Uh, you can head to lightnerdesigns.com. They do have uh, options for the Nissan, but I don't know if it works with that rack, but they do have a great rack system, their ACS, that uh, is compatible with some tonneau covers because they have photos of them on their website. So uh, maybe check them out. But either way, uh, you should be able to come up with some kind of solution, and hopefully we were uh, at least a little bit helpful. <clears throat> we need that as a T-shirt. A little helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot. Nope, just a little bit. Shock upgrades from uh, Leander Peters. Hello, gents. I've got a question for you related to suspension. I drive a 2001 Grand Cherokee WJ. It's got a three-inch suspension system with long arms front and rear from Iron Rock Off-Road. Interview suggestion? Uh, it's riding on 33-inch Falcon Wild Peak MT tires and Bill Stein 5100 shocks. The suspension flexes quite well. And the 5100s give a really nice smooth ride. I'm very happy with the off-road capability, but would like to carry a little more speed through the whoops and rough stuff when needed. Right now it rides a little low, so I feel like I need to increase my up travel, possibly with taller springs. What I'm wondering is what shock do you suggest without spending a crazy amount of money, style, travel, or if I'm buying springs and shocks anyway, is there a budget-friendly coilover that would be better? I'm willing and able to make custom mounts as needed. Also, I have a set of Super Duty axles that I've been thinking about installing to add uh, strength for larger tires, but I'm not sure if the extra unsprung weight would be a major hindrance for higher speed travel. Any suggestions would be much appreciated and... That's uh, dude. He's in Saskatchewan. What's up in Saskatchewan? You just wanted to say Saskatchewan. 
Um, I'm going to say don't. <laughs> he, by the way, he writes, and remember everything matters and taste the biscuit. So maybe oh, a little taste the biscuit. Right, I'm going to cut that you. off right here. Mm-hmm. I would say no to the Super Duty axles. There's so, I mean, you have to go through and probably figure out what the tone rings are so your gauges work. It's a ton of unsprung weight. You're now swapping over to eight lug wheels. They're way wider than the vehicle. Again, super heavy. Not what you want for going fast. I would, you know, you've probably got Dana 44s under that thing or maybe a 35 front, 44 rear. Maybe get a Rubicon 44 front or something like that. I would stick with that class of, of axle. So that's number one. Number two, yeah, go to Bill Stein uh, and check them out. You can get something if you want to keep the same springs and just go to a shock. Hard to beat a 5160. Reservoir, you know, uh, 2.1 inch piston. You can get them in different lengths. There's custom shocks uh, offered as well. Going to the 5160 their... over a 5100 that he has now. 5100 is not a reservoir shock. Oh yeah. Okay. So so I would I would think about 5160s. Get them for the length you need, or uh, go into a coilover, and they have for the quality, the price of the Bilstein coilovers. I really like. So uh, aftermarket, that's always going to be my choice. Okay. All right, and. Uh, I wanted to say thank you uh, from our longtime listener and friend, Sam Houston, who uh, sent me a little care package. Is that an actual handwritten letter? Uh, a handwritten letter with his... Oh, he's got a monogram on the top. Look at that. Wow. So uh, his letterhead. Uh-huh. And uh, so he uh, used to be at uh, Fab Fours before they got taken over and stuff. And so um, he's off doing other things now. But he says, uh, Sean, I continue to really enjoy the podcast, even though I'm no longer in the industry. Uh, and he says, uh, the items enclosed. My neighbor a few doors down is a senior executive with FN USA, which is a uh, awesome gun manufacturer. He says, at a party a few weeks ago that I had, I grabbed these. I know zilch about cigars, but know from the podcast that you do. Also know you're a firearms guy, so I thought, hey, these uh, are appropriate for you. I hope they're half decent. Keep the suckage to a minimum, unless you are smoking these. And that's our friend Sam Houston. So it's two. Those look hermetically sealed. They are hermetically sealed, and it is uh, FN uh, bands on it, so probably some special hand-rolled well, What does that mean, it. FN? I, I That's don't... the name of the company. Oh, F- FN. FN. So anyway, uh, Sam, thanks for the cigars. I am going to uh, to enjoy these. Uh, I don't know what they are, but sometimes that's half the fun <laughs> with cigars. They look like a Connecticut uh, wrapper, and it looks like uh, something probably in the package because I don't want to open them up in here with AC on. What and... if he set you weed? No. It looks like, um, you know, a darker uh, filler and binder. So I'm going to guess that these are probably pretty good. But I just want to say uh, thanks, Sam. Really yeah, appreciate it's, that's that. That's a nice yeah, It's nice when our listeners uh, think of us. We've had yeah. so many different things over the years of you guys saying, hey, you know, you, you provide us with this uh, halfway decent on occasion podcast, and uh, I want to send you something. Sam, thank, thank you. you for thinking of lightning as well. appreciate that. Oh, wait. Uh, well, there are two cigars. So, you want to chuck one down and turn green? I will. Okay, I'll save the other one for you. I, they, okay, that le- legit. I'll do it. Okay, we've smoked cigars can, before can we at, do your, a, at your gun club. Can we do a time lapse? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Just watch the, your face change over time. No, that's true. Lightning has gone with me to the uh, cigar I, lounge. I've and done that. Choked down a few cigars in the past. So. Uh, Seth Anderson says, "Hage hey, Boobly and fruit pants." Love that. Lightning's delivery on the email where he I was like that buried. Boobly is still <laughs> out there. I don't remember what episode that started at. But it's still funny mm-hmm. to this day. <laughs> Jaboobly and fruit <laughs> pants. Because I called you fruit pants, and uh, I don't, but I don't know where the Jaboobly uh, came I, from. I vaguely remember saying something because it's J, uh-huh. and I don't know. I put together Jaboobly. You it did? Stuck. No, I thought a listener did. You you named me Jaboobly? No, I think I was the one who named you Jaboobly. Mm, I don't know. Do about any, any of our listeners, Structural Podcast I at gmail.com. I, if, you, if you remember or know of the episode where Jaboobly was first uttered in our 370 something episodes, please uh, please advise. I'm fairly certain that was a listener a creation. Listener? Yes. All right. Anyway. Lightning's delivery on the email where he was buried was unexpectedly hilarious. Uh, it got me laughing out loud. Okay, usually Lightning's attempt at humor are entertaining, but not LOL worthy. <laughs> nice job, Lightning. Uh, that's okay. Didn't that uh, was a compliment? Sure, I'll, barely. I'll take but that. Uh... by the way, I heard that you liked it when uh, people tell you how long they've been listening. So I wanted to tell you that I've been listening since almost the start. I think I only had like two months of backlog to work through when I started. I also have the elusive t-shirt y'all used to send out to emailers. It's getting worn out now, so I only wear it when I'm going out in public so people can see it. I also regularly wear uh, the hat that y'all sent me. 
as well as well, the we said hats at one point, and he was the Cerakote giveaway winner. Oh, oh, that's right, I remember that. Now he's just a double, by the way. By the way, I have, I still haven't put the trim coat on the truck yet because it's rarely washed in a leisurely fashion, okay. and the headlights that were in a rough shape were on the vehicle that ended up getting totaled before the winter was over. But I'm sure I'll still be able to use it on my 2001 Tacoma sometime soon. Also, those AI songs, well, they sound okay, a little digital. But not a good fit for the podcast. Love the show, Seth from Chicago. And he says, uh, hashtag OG Emmy, yeah, buddy, and Winnebago man accoutrements. Yeah, buddy. The accoutrement that you will need. Accoutrement. I love that. I love meeting people who have not seen Winnebago man, so I get to share the magic with them. Truckshowpodcast at gmail.com is the main email inbox. Lightning at truckshowpodcast.com is me. And Holman at Truck Show Podcast, the other guy sitting right over there. The Truck Show, the Truck Show, the Truck Show. Oh, oh. And you can hit us up on social, give us a follow, and uh, check out what we're up to in our lives away from the Truck Show Podcast. You can find that at, at LBC Lightning, at Sean P. Holman, or at Truck Show Podcast. By the way, shout out to Dave. Doing uh, doing some amazing work there on the, uh, the At Truck Show Podcast Instagram and Facebook. And he's uh, me malicious a little bit, but uh, he's got a, a lot of conversation going on over there. And it's funny because every once in a while we'll get tagged in. We're like, didn't know that there was this big conversation happening yeah. on our socials. Yeah, no, it's kind of funny because it's uh, I'll be just doing my thing, like pooping. And then all of a sudden <laughs> I get a notification. I'm like, let me jump in there. I was actually thinking recently of starting up a Truck Show Podcast Facebook group where everybody can interact, give us ideas, tell us what they like, don't like, and we can have our listeners kind of hang out inside that's the smart. Facebook group. Because uh, we, we haven't done do... that. And I thought that would be a really good idea. Well, do you think that we should do a live? Because, you know, like our friend Ralph Garman, he does these like uh, deals uh, once a month. You mean the one where I've said for like six months we should do a live, and then you're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I didn't want to do it, but now I do. All right, I well, my mind. okay, so, so like, let's uh, but, do it. I'm asking you, though, legit. Yeah. Do you think that our listeners, and I, I don't really know the answer to this question, do you think our listeners are more apt to watch a live stream on YouTube or Facebook? Uh, I think Facebook or, 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 or Instagram. Or Instagram. Yeah. You Instagram so? is, is, I think, more immediate than any of those. Okay. Because Instagram's happening right now. YouTube is something that was edited and is nice. But you can live stream on YouTube. I understand. Okay. But I think, but we don't have a following on YouTube, so... That's not uh, that's good, a good point. Gonna help us that's out. That's a good point. Forty-two thousand on Instagram or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I would do it on Instagram. And if you guys like that idea, leave us a message. Call us on the five star hotline six five seven two zero five sixty one zero five and tell five us what you star. think. Five star. <laughs> five star. Hotline. I can't stop the jingle singers when do they come you, in. They come in. Do you guys want to uh, a uh, be a part of a live stream if we did that? You know, once a month or or every I don't know month and a half or something like that. And would you guys be uh, be interested in having a Facebook uh, group that's uh, dedicated to the Truck Show podcast that uh, we could have some conversations in there? How did you come up with a month and a half? Every 45 days. Six, <laughs> six weeks. Oh, I see. Okay. I just know how busy we are. Right. Sometimes a month doesn't... It, but it was weird that you said a month and a half. Like, they're, yeah, okay. 45 days. <laughs> just such a weird Approximately number, yeah. five and a half weeks <laughs> right. to short of eight. Would yes. you? No, I'm trying to... This should be some cadence to it, I think. I don't think we want to just do it once. We do it here in the pod shed. I think you do we one can, first. We can eat pizza and drink Listen, beer. We could just barely do a show, let alone... The, but know, if we I, did one... That's what I'm saying. That's why we're not doing this once a week. We can barely do two shows a week as it is. Are we going to advertise or just go live? I don't know. Let our listeners tell us. You guys tell us. Hit us up. You know the uh, the email. You know the phone number. Let us know what you think. We want to do more stuff with you guys. Do we want to really expose the suckage life? Yes. We yes. Do. I, actually, I, I actually would like to do a meetup this summer because we haven't done one in a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think- Summer's half cool. over, buddy. No, it's not. just started yesterday. It's, it's like end of June. No, it's July well, you, 1st oh, when yeah, you hear this. Is. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I mean, yeah, guys. It's beginning of July. All right. I got to get out of here. I can't handle any more lightning. I'm at my limit. That's it. But we got to have you leave a review. So that's not a great segue into leaving us five stars, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, head over. Lightning, 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 lightning. All right, I okay. got it. I got All it. Right. I got right. it. Head on over to uh, Facebook, Spotify, or especially Apple Podcasts. Please leave us a five star review and uh, let us know how you like the show. We haven't had any good comments in a while. We keep getting reviews, but nobody's writing funny things for us to read on the air. And we uh, you don't know be what. so lazy, people. Come on now, make it funny. Just make it funny? Yeah, make it funny. Leave us a review. Make it funny. There you go. Turn up the comedy. All right. 
Are you, are you done? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. done. You, you feel like I'm, I'm you, holding back. I don't oh, want to piss you off. All right, great. Uh, Truck Show Podcast is presented by Nissan. Please head over to NissanUSA.com where you can build and price your brand new Nissan Frontier. Get a great truck at a great price, lots of value, rugged, durable, love the Frontier. Again, NissanUSA.com or head on down to your local dealer. Hey, guys, and if you have a, uh, a Ram with a 6.7 liter Cummins diesel, 2013 to 2024, Get rid of that suck-ass grid heater you got shoved in there that's like a, it's like boogers in your nose. You know what I'm saying? You just can not breathe through that thing. That's what your grid heater's like. Get rid of it. Replace it with a Monster Ram and the high-flow billet intake plate. Head over to BanksPower.com to get yours. And if you uh, need synthetic lubricants and protectants, motor oil, car care, or detailing products, filters... Or even uh, some merch to show your pride. Head on over to AmsOil.com where you can find all those things on their website. We are users of AmsOil products. We love it for our vehicles and we recommend them for yours. AmsOil, a proud sponsor of the Truck Show podcast. And also, hey, first in synthetics. And everyone needs truck accessories, so you are going to head over to EGRUSA.com. That's where you're going to find fender flares and the roll track, whether it's manual or automatic. They've got accessories for your truck. EGRUSA.com, the best made accessories that you can find. Lightning says so. All right, Lightning, glad that you uh, approve of our new sponsor, EGRUSA. Uh, and thanks for all of your efforts today on filling many, 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 many minutes of Truck Show Podcast content. That's funny. I don't recall asking for a really, 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 really boring story. My God. Don't you understand? No one cares. Uh, suck it. The Truck Show Podcast is a production of Truck Famous LLC. This podcast was created by Sean Holman and Jay Tillis with production elements by DJ Omar Khan. If you like what you've heard, please open your Apple Podcast or Spotify app and give us a five-star rating. And if you're a fan, there's no better way to show your support than by patronizing our sponsors. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. Taste the butter spread. Taste the goodness of the biscuit with the butter spread. To get your butter spread all on me. I don't like the way it mixes with my mac and cheese.